Now I'm live? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. This is my first time. Uh, it looks like we lost the live connection, but now we're back on. All right. Uh, where was I? So I'm going to talk about surfaces. So let me hide this. I'll hide this. Hide everything. And let's get rid of that. So let's talk about working with surfaces. So let's start with morph between surfaces. This is a fun one. So basically, you can use at least any number of surfaces, at least two. It's going to create voxels between these two surfaces and x, y, and z parameters. It always going to be, it's always going to be parameters because it's difficult to make uniform distances between non-uniform distances. So we always use parameters here for morphing between objects. I'm just going to copy copy paste some of these guys. And let's uh, let's just reference these surfaces like this. Set multiple surfaces. So let's start with just like these two. And so as you can see here, this is now creating conformal voxels between these surfaces. And you can use a graph mapper as well to change the distribution of distances. And you can use multiple surfaces. And I'll show you what that looks like. Oops. Yep. So it doesn't have to be just two surfaces. It can be three surfaces. And the number of Z divisions, you'll see if it's an even number, you'll see that one of these kind of bottoms one of the bottoms of some of these voxels will land right on that surface if it's not an even number. But basically, you'll see how it changes between, uh, it's morphing between the topology of these surfaces. Um, you can also use revolved surfaces. Uh, I just left these as curves so I can do a revolution. So I'm going to do a revolution surface. I'm going to have curves for my profile curves. My axis, so profile curves. Let's make both of these the profiles. And let's make this the axis, axis profile curves. So now we've got some revolved surfaces. And these are in Grasshopper, so what's nice now is I can take these points in this, and it's parametric. So if we have, now we have two untrained surfaces coming out of here, we can do the same thing. If we I'm just going to copy paste this. Now we can morph. We can morph between revolved surfaces. So you'll see that you can use any surface, but what I also want to show is it needs to be an untrimmed surface. So what that means is the 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 surface as it's built without being trimmed. So I've I've taken these surfaces and I've basically just projected a circle onto them to trim them. And if you click on it and type what what is that Let's see it says trim surface and so crystalline is going to ignore those um, if i set these surfaces here you're going to get this same exact result as this so that's one of the tricky parts about working with crystalline or working with anything in grasper if you're trying to do divisions of a surface you have to be an untrimmed surface so something like this, where I've just made a closed curve, a planar curve, and I want to make a planar surface for my planar curves. It's not an untrimmed surface. This is a trimmed surface. So it won't work that way. There are some ways around that. Um, in Rhino 7, the work in progress, if you have Rhino 6, you should be able to download the work in progress for Rhino 7. They have a, a cool tool in there now called Quad Remesh. And this is actually pretty cool to use because you can make basically a quad mesh from almost any surface and you can tell it your desired edge length and it will try to make equal edge length quad meshes out of these surfaces. So that's something you can try. And then you can use the tool called mesh uh, morph between meshes, which is here. So 
for this to work, it has to be meshes with exactly the same topology, the same face order, face layout. So if it's the same mesh and copy, or if it's an offset of that mesh, it'll work. If it's two different meshes, it's going to have problems. But what you need is it's asking for meshes to morph between, whether they're triangulated or quads, and then a parameter, a Z parameter to morph between. So I'm going to just copy this parameter over, move this out of the way. Is it triangulated or quad? False means quads. So let me select these two meshes. So now you can see every quad face acts as a division on, this, on the mesh surface. So then it's nice. You can edit your meshes, do fun stuff, you know, to make your lattice structure more conformal between meshes. And I like to use meshes because it's something that can be baked and saved into a Rhino file that I can use later. So it's not just all completely parametric in Grasshopper. Um, also, it works with triangulated meshes, but I'll show you the difference here. Right now it's making quads out of triangles, which doesn't really work because that means like two sides of your quad is basically joined together. So it won't work well with uh, most of your um, unit cells. But if we tell it it's triangulated, then what it'll do is basically divide each triangle into three quads. And so they're not square quads, but it'll work for your unit cells. <clears throat> So what's next? Let's talk about populating these. Let me just hide all of these. Drink a glass of water. I'm going to do the rest of the demo um, using this sphere. I'm sorry. Uh, just doing a uniform mesh because it'll be more helpful to show kind of the trimming and cleaning up tools because there's hopefully usually a lot less cleaning up to do when you're actually conforming your lattice but if we make a lattice this way oh i lost that surface let's do it like this so we have our geometry we have our voxels i'm going to make these all one size just for clarity of the rest of the examples Let's make them a bit larger. All right, so there's our voxels. So next, the next set in the toolbar is populate. So we have a couple options to populate. We can do a lattice fill, or we can do a shell fill. And I'll show you both of these. Um, so this is the lattice fill. It's asking for the unit cell and the voxels. The voxels is the output from the voxelize tool. So we have our voxels, and now we need to pick a unit cell. Um, and so the cell type and the cell selector, these two kind of go together. The output of this is U, unit cell, and this will give you a unit cell. So let me hide these voxels. Now you can see these. And so this list is kind of a drop-down menu of all these pre-made unit cells I've included in here. Um, all the first 12 or something are uh, beam-based lattices. Uh, we've got a couple tween lattices, which I'll try to get to later. We've got shells and then some of the other 2D ones. So I can show you some of these different unit cells. So you see how that works. And let's just go back to uh, BC for the rest of this. And then I'll show you uh, more the shell fill. Shell fill is the same thing as for the unit cell, but a shell, and as for voxels. And lastly, it's as for a tolerance. And this is the tolerance for it to basically merge all the nodes into one mesh to make it just one clean mesh file. So these are our voxels. I'll just copy paste these to make some, uh, oops. These are our unit cells. And I'll make the tolerance something like 0.01. Right, so now we've got these shell lattice structures I can show. So most of these are closed cell 
Uh, they're basically uh, what's called parallelohedron, parallelohedrons. They're polyhedrons that are able to basically tessellate in three directions without leaving a gap. So there's the rhombic dodecahedron, truncated octahedron, and the octahedron. And let me change this so we can kind of see that better. All right? So these are octahedrons, rhombic dodecahedrons. It's a bit hard to tell what's going on in there, but if you uh, slice it with a clipping plane, you can kind of see what's going on. Um, and lastly, I'll show you the one, the gyroid. Gyroid is an, not a closed cell, it's all one surface. And basically, you can tell I've made all of these, the mesh, uh, the shell unit cells, um, basically as simple as possible with the least amount of faces as possible. And that's basically to make it so it's a lot less data to process for the rest of the tools. Um, I'll show you this by showing the edges, mesh edges. So, sorry, that's hard to look at, but you can see they're all just quads, quad surfaces. So to make this look a bit nicer, this is where some of those other tools come in, like Weaverbird. Use some of the subdivision tools from Weaverbird, like Catmull Clark subdivision. And so if we subdivide this mesh by a level of one, you'll see it looks quite a bit smoother. And now it has um, basically exponentially double the uh, number of faces. And if we make it a level two, Maybe even more. But now this is getting heavy, right? This is going to be a large file. So if we're doing more things like trimming it, things like that, it gets it gets too much to process, too much to compute. And you might want to just keep it simple at first. So maybe just one division, zero divisions. Um, so next, I'm going to show you how to, well, let's look. We've got the populate tools. The others, I'll, I won't talk about. Uh, during this webinar, but tween cell and tween shell, you can morph between two different cell unit cell types within one object. And so we've got a couple different cells and then you'll use the tools like the cell morph attractor or value to kind of give a value for how you want those to, to uh, morph between those cells. Um, but I won't be going over that just yet. So let's jump next into the modified tools. Um, these are all for mostly just cleaning up, cleaning up curves. But first, let's just talk about trimming. We want to trim this shell back down to the sphere that we started with. So let's just trim the shell. And so it's what we want to use is the geometry we want it to trim to. And this has to be a closed object, either a closed B-rep or a closed mesh. And then the lattice. And we can just plug it right into there. And then the geometry we want to trim to is, again, this sphere which is inside there. So let's trim that shell and hide this. And now you can see that it's trimmed to that sphere. But what you might also know when you're trimming shells, you might notice is it's basically just deleting vertices, deleting nodes that are outside of there. So it's leaving some of these as not as quads, but as triangles. And with no subdivisions, it's not super accurate. Not everything is going to be touching the surface. Um, if we subdivide that again, give it one subdivision. Um, okay, let's try that again. Now you can see it gets a little closer and so on and so forth. If we subdivide it twice, it's probably show it a little better how that gets trimmed. So basically it's up to you, like uh, how, how many subdivisions you want to do before you do any other operations. Usually for me, I'll leave it, I'll leave it as is until I get to the last part where I want to modify and do create a mesh from it. So I'm going to leave this alone for a second and move on to the beams. We have these populated beams and we want to trim these as well. So we'll trim lattice and same thing, the lattice to trim and the geometry to trim from. 
So now we have this trim lattice. And so basically the rest, most of the rest of these tools in here are for kind of cleaning up this because you'll notice there's a lot of little short beams that we may not want. There might be beams just floating in space, things like that. And so we wanna do some cleanup to this before we actually make our final lattice. Um, I'm looking for floaters, but I'm not seeing any. Um, so I don't, I'm not gonna go over every single tool in detail. I'll show you where they are in the examples in modify, remove curves. Sorry, this is taking a second to load. Oh boy. All right. So I'll just quickly show what's going on. We've got a sphere. It's basically doing the same thing, sphere voxelized, populated, and trimmed. And then we've got lattice topology going on, which I'll describe later, but it's basically just making a clean topology of points. And so we've got a lot of tools. We've got remove duplicates. That'll remove any two curves that share the same midpoint. Right now, there's no duplicates obviously, and you can see that same number from the input and the output. Uh, we've got remove floating curves. This one actually found some floaters and removed them. Uh, remove short curves. So we can, this one, you have the lattice and the length of curves, the minimum length. And so this is also in Rhino units. So anything under what, two millimeters will get lost. And remove by valence. Valence is basically the number of curves connected to each curve. So a valence one curve only has one connection. So sometimes you want to get rid of just those curves that um, the ones that just kind of don't have any connections just stick out. So those are valence one. I did see, yeah, we have a floater here. Valence one will also get rid of the floaters and leave it here. And then last but not least, my favorite is merge curves. And merge curves basically looks for any endpoints and will join those endpoints together within whatever minimum distance you say. So what's nice about this is if you have points that are really close that maybe they should get connected, like these guys down here, or uh, so it'll join those together, but at the same time, it'll also remove short curves things like that. So let me show you what goes on here. If I start removing curves or start merging curves, this is what happens. And so that's a really helpful tool. And usually that's my kind of go-to thing. It's real quick and easy. Just merge all the ones that aren't connected. And then you might have some valence one and you can use the room of my valence after. Uh, but let's go quickly back to this. So I have my trimmed lattice. You'll notice there's two outputs here. One is curves that are affected, uh, the curves that have not been affected by the trim and the curves that have been affected by the trim. Uh, let me show you this a little more clearly. So these are the curves that were affected by the trim and the curves that were not. So what's helpful here is a lot of the, the rest of these tools, some of them can be kind of slow. So things like merging curves, things like that. Um, it can be slow if you have a lot of curves to deal with, but typically you only really need to do any modifications to the ones on the outside. The ones that aren't affected by the trim, you, typically you don't want those to be modified at all. And so you can save a lot of processing time, make the whole thing faster if you're just using the trimmed curves to modify. Or if you just wanna remove valence one curves, this is anything that got trimmed is gonna be a valence one. Um, but for now, I'm just going to join these together and I'm going to do a uh, merge curves here. And the distance number slider. So you can see it's a little slow and it's a lot bigger than I thought. Let's make this a maximum number of 10. I'm starting to clean those up. 
So I might leave it like that, who knows, for now. And then maybe I'll just remove those valence one curves. Remove by valence. And the number. I'll just add a number slider here, but I just want to remove valence one. And then we have a Boolean option to flip it. This was one of the strange features that was asked uh, by one of the users, if I could add this, is basically it'll flip to leave everything but valence one curves. <laughs> uh, or valence, whatever valence curves you want. All right, so we've trimmed this, we've cleaned it, we've modified it, we have it how we want. What's next? <clears throat> next, we'll talk about making a skin. Sorry, let me have some water. So there's a few different ways you can make a skin. Usually the easiest way is to make a mesh from your object and use those mesh edges. So a real quick way is just do a mesh B-Rep. Mesh this. And let's see the mesh edges. So that's not very clean looking, but you do have control over it. So if you go to your meshes, you go to utilities, mesh settings, let's do custom. Uh, that looks better. And then we can say what minimum and maximum edge length we want. So let's just add a slider here. So we can make some really big edges, make them smaller. Good. So now we'll just, we'll use, we'll say this is going to be our skin, right? And this is just making a lattice skin, making beams that will connect all these outer parts. Um, typically, it'll just make any structure a little stronger just by cleaning, connecting unconnected things. Um, it'll make it less pointy if it's going to be something held. It can be a mating surface. Um, if it's um, anything like that. So our mesh edges, obviously, there's no naked edges. There's no non-manifold edges, only interior edges. And so just for to, to hide this, this is our this is our skin. I'll bring this a little closer. And let me just make these different colors just so it's easier to see. Let's make this red. And let's make these. So that's a little better, right? So now we can see we have this lattice and we have our lattice skin, but they're not connected. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, crystalline. I have things like lattice connections and I have things like morph lattice to skin. Um, I'll show you my lattice connections real quick. Basically, this makes connections between two lattices. So we have lattice A, lattice B, number of connections, and the distance they'll go. So let's say our skin is lattice A, our lattice structure is lattice B. And then let's say the number of connections, let's say just two, right? And then the distance is the maximum distance that it'll make a beam from one point to another. So let me just copy and paste this. So let's, let's see what's going on here. So basically it's made these new curves. It's made a beam from an endpoint of the lattice to an endpoint of the skin. And we can change the number. Number of, this will be the number of beams coming from one point. And that's the distance they'll travel. So sometimes that can be helpful, sometimes it's not. And I'll show you again the other one real quick. So let me hide that. This one is typically more helpful, more flattest to skin. So what we're looking for is the lattice to morph, the lattice to morph to the skin. And then this is a little confusing. I'll try to explain it better. Um, 
we have the geometry to morph to, and this is basically the outer boundary of the geometry, like the, the mesh that we made, or the let's call it just the sphere surface. And then the distance is that it'll only affect uh, nodes in our lattice within a certain distance of that surface. Um, so let me connect this here. Our lattice gets the input, the geometry, that we want to use as our limit for distance. I'll make this VREP. This is our original surface we started with. And so I may only want it to affect nodes like two or three millimeters from that surface. And then the next option is geometry to morph two and also the maximum distance it will go to morph. And so this we want, we could say, let me just cut this distance here. Let's say we want it to morph to these curves, but I'll show you what happens. Uh, let me make these blue again. That didn't work. Make these blue. All right. So now it's morphed to the skin. I'll show you how it's going. It's basically pulling it to the skin, the nearest point. But it's actually not going to the nodes. It's going to these curves. So we want it to actually go to these points on the, on the skin. And the way we can do that is we have, we started with these, the, the, the skin is the mesh edges, the nodes are the mesh vertices. So if we go to the mesh tools, deconstruct a mesh, now we have the vertices. And that's the actual geometry we want these to get pulled to. So, let me connect that to the vertices. So now you'll see they're getting pulled to the actual nodes of the skin. They're not all getting pulled because some are too far away or either too far from the surface or too far. So if I make this longer, they'll get pulled to the nearest one. Or we can make these make more nodes, make the skin a little tighter. Um, it looks like I'm going to be running out of time, but I'll just keep going and I'll, and I'll just do this an extra, I'm sorry, wait, I started at five. So I'll be going for two hours actually. So we have plenty of time. And if you have to leave, don't worry, this will get recorded. And if you can stay, I'll try to get through most of this real fast and we can hopefully have questions after. <clears throat> So we've morphed the lattice to the skin. What's next? Um, to make this a little easier to visualize, I'm just going to use the pipe tool. It's going to make pipes around each curve. Uh, let's give them a radius of maybe 1 or 0.5. Probably already are 1. Let's make it All right. So that's a little easier to see. So you can see it's pulled uh, pulled the lattice to the nodes. Um, another way to make a mesh skin, which I'll do really quick, um, is use a tool from Kangaroo called Mesh, 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 Simple Remesh. And simple remesh is a really nice tool. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. I tend to like the one in Kangaroo version one, which I don't know where that went, um, called Mesh Machine. But if you search on the Grasshopper forums for Mesh Machine, I tend to like that one better. But I'll show this one just real fast because it's quick and easy. Um, so what we need is an input geometry, a desired edge length for the edges. We can add creases or corners. And this is basically the number of iterations it's going to try to go through. Um, so let's just start with, and so don't crash the computer on accident. All right, and let me put this up here. And uh, let's look at the mesh edges. Now it makes this triangulated mesh with it tries to make as close to equal edge lengths as possible. 
tries to make them as close to equilateral as possible. Um, you're not going to always get exactly what you want, but it's quite helpful. So maybe let's let's use this skin instead. Um, we can make these a little smaller. And again, just as simply, we have our um, mesh edges that we use um, to attach to. The um, this is our lattice skin. Um, the mesh vertices, which these are getting morphed to. So actually, I'm just going to move these from this mesh to this mesh. So, and let's preview these, preview those. So this is uh, usually a bit nicer of a mesh skin. Um, you can see these are all, some of these are kind of overlapping the mesh uh, the edges. Um, you can just play with these values to make it look how you want. I'm not going to spend a lot of time messing with this just to keep going. But um, once we have our mesh skin, our lattice, let's just put these together in one curve. Skin and our lattice. And just get these together so we can see them. Cool. So we made a lattice structure our first lattice structure. Um, next, I want to talk a bit about creating meshes because this is something people ask a lot about. And so I use Dendro. Dendro is a really great plugin for creating volumetric meshes. Um, so let's start just with the settings, create settings. So by volumetric means it's basically doing almost what Chris Lone is doing is it's voxelizing this geometry and anywhere a voxel meets the geometry, um, the actual geometry that's there, it'll say that geometry is a mesh. Um, and then it simplifies those voxels and makes one kind of full mesh. Um, that's a very bad and quick explanation, but that's basically what it does. Um, so it's asking, what do we want our voxel size to be? And typically a good rule of thumb for me is to say the radius of my beams or whatever geometry, I want the voxels to be one third of that. Because if the voxels were the same size as the beam, there would only be one beam per voxel. I mean, one voxel per beam per diameter of the beam and that would be too low of a resolution. So we wanna get a little higher, but not too high of a resolution. So I usually just do a division by three and my smallest radius or feature size is going to be my voxel size. Okay. Um, let me just try to keep this looking as clean as possible for you guys. Um, so next, we can make meshes. It can convert a curve to a volume, a mesh to a volume, points to a volume. Here we'll just be converting a curve to a volume. So let's hide these. So let's say these are the curves we want to mesh. This is the radius. And these are the settings. And now it's created this mesh. And you can see it's nice and joined together, good resolution. And it's still, it's not a mesh yet, it's a dendro volume. If we want to make a volume to a mesh, we use this tool. Volume, settings. And it can be slow sometimes, depending on how, what resolution of voxels you're using and everything. But now we can bake this and that's a mesh. And I'll show you guys what this looks like. But it tends to make a pretty heavy mesh, as you can see. Which isn't always a bad thing because you can reduce this mesh. It's better to start with a higher resolution and bring it down than start with a low resolution. So you could just do mesh, edit tools, reduce mesh, reduce it by 50%, whatever you want. That tends to work fairly well. All right, so next we meshed these curves. I wanna show you how you would make a mesh from a shell structure. So here's the shell I made earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier for you guys. <laughs> and let's look at this real quick. So I'll hide these, I'll hide everything from the curves. So we've got our shell structure and we've got it subdivided. 
we're going to use this as well. So one thing you can do is you can use Weaver Bird and you can use the mesh thicken tool. And this is typically only going to work well with something like this. That's an open cell structure because it's thickening mesh surfaces. It won't thicken closed meshes very well. So if you're using another cell type, one of the other shells that are closed cells, it won't work so well, but it can work with this. So let me just show you what that'll look like. Let's make our thickness the same as the radius of our, or I guess we'll go double. So we have a thickened mesh now. It doesn't look super nice. If we subdivide this a little more, it might look a little nicer. And it can get slow as well. Now we're working with a lot of mesh faces. I'll try not to crash Rhino during this webinar. Cool. Anyway, you can see how that works. But if we want to do more with this, there's not a lot of things we can do. Uh, Rhino's not so great at Boolean operations, but Dendro is. So I'll show you guys how to make a mesh, make a thickened mesh using Dendro. So with Dendro, you have mesh to volume, but mesh to volume only works with closed meshes. It's gonna take a closed mesh and make that volume the mesh. Um, so what, if we're trying to thicken a mesh, we're gonna use the points, points to volume. And we're basically gonna do exactly what we did before deconstruct the mesh and now you can see the vertices let me make this not subdivided as much All right so we've got a bunch of points here oops sorry let's do the trimmed one there we go we've got a bunch of points and so it's basically the same thing we have points radius and settings these are points Let's make the radius the same, 0.5. There we go. And what you're going to see here, these points are further apart than the radius. So we need more points. Basically, we're going to subdivide this. And so this is where, how we use Crystal on Weaver Bird and Dendro together. And so we're subdividing to make points, to use points to make meshes. Um, Let's subdivide by three just now. And this will take a moment because Dendro is working. This is where you go have your coffee, anything. There you go. So now you can see we've got, let's hide these points. A nice thickened mesh all joined together all an even um, wall thickness throughout a closed mesh ready to 3d print ah, so next i'm just going to show you a couple other things using dendro because people are asking me how do you uh, add features how do you add a solid skin how do you do those sort of things um, so I'm going to show you just some of these uh, tools. You can you can do that with Dendro really quick, and then I'll show you um, some of the ways to vary thickness. And then I think that'll be all that I'll show for this webinar. Um, so I've made some extra geometry here. Um, let's say let's say this thing has a uh, has a bolt that goes through it, a screw that goes through it. And so we need to put this hole through it. So I've made this hole and I've made this geometry, which is basically the, the space I want to cut away to make from that hole. So this is the, the skin, the surface I want to join to it. This is what I want to cut away. And so here is where we we'll use um, mesh to volume. You basically give it a base mesh and your settings. Let's connect the settings here. And basically, I'll just um, reference these. 
set one, do that. And let's set the other one first. Let's do this one. And we need it to be a mesh. So I'll quickly just okay, mesh B rep and join it. So now this is a volume. And this is a volume we can use. And then I'll just copy paste this into the other one. Right. So now we have these in here. And let's say I want to want to add it to here. Oh, first, actually, you know what? I forgot one thing. I wanted to show you how we trim trim a mesh to its outer volume, which is basically going to be the same thing. I'm going to copy this one more time. Um, and so this mesh, I'm going to make um, the original sphere, this outer sphere geometry, All right? OK, so this is our original geometry. This is our lattice. So let's look at these intersect tools. There's these Boolean operations. We can do a union. We can do an intersection. We can do a difference. In this case, I'll do an intersection between the lattice and this outer sphere. And there you go. So what you're going to see here is these beams, obviously, since they were on the surface of the sphere, or some of them were, uh, they're going to get trimmed in half because they were on the surface, so half of their radius, I mean, half of their diameter is going to get trimmed off. So one way around this is to either start with a geometry that's offset inwards from your original thing, your original design space, um, or you can make your skin offset inwards and just morph the lattice to the skin inwards or things like that. There's other ways around this, but sometimes you want it. Sometimes you want uh, it to trim the outside because you want to have a bit smoother of a surface. Maybe this is, you know, your design space has mating geometry and you want that surface to be smooth. Things like that. So it's up to you guys. Um, but now we have this trimmed lattice. Um, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do another intersection. between uh, this skin and my outer surface, right? So now that's trimmed to that geometry. And lastly, I'm gonna join these two together, intersect union, or yeah, flatten the input of this. hide these guys. So now this is one volume all joined together, right? I did a union. And then we're just going to cut away what's in the inside with this last geometry, this one here. And so let's do a subtraction, a volume difference. Um, we're going to cut. This is the geometry we start with. This is the geometry we subtract. And there we are. So that's how you will add mating geometry, mating surfaces, solid skins, things like that. And now you have this nice, clean, closed mesh that you can join. Um, if things look a little weird around the edges, there's some filters like smooth, which is really helpful. You can add different levels of smoothness. And that will take away some of these sharp edges. It's nice and smooth. All right. Um, so who knows what this is? Maybe it's like a, a wheel for a robot that rolls on that. Something like that. Um, last thing before we stop and do questions, I'm going to show you how to um, apply th different thicknesses to a lattice. Um, so I'm just going to, this is our settings for Dendro. This is the way I usually just turn it on or off is just disable this and everything after that goes away. Um, so I'm just going to go back to our lattice. And I can preview. I'm just going to use pipes to show this for now. Sorry, this is getting a little messy. All right. 
So we're going to go back to Crystalline and let's look at these thicken tools. We've got lattice thickness attractor, lattice thickness value. The difference between these, uh, the attractor uses a point, a curve, a surface, something to attract. So anything that's uh, based on the distance from your attractor, you can change the thickness. Um, values uses points and values. So that can be helpful for things like, um, like bitmap images. If you have a black and white bitmap image, you can have the points uh, be, be the pixels and the values be the color value, and that can change your thickness, things like that. Um, but let's just do an attractor. Oh, sorry, thickness, attractor. Um, so this is asking, what lattice do we want to thicken? What's our attractor? Influence is just a number from zero to one, and that's kind of a, a smoothing factor for how much influence it has. And then minimum and maximum values. So let's connect our curves here. Let's make a point in space, something like that, right? And let's reference that point. And that's our attractor. Influence, I'm just gonna use a number slider and we'll see what that looks like. And minimum and maximum value right now, the minimum is 0.5, let's say minimum is 0.5 and maximum is one. So now the output is just a set of numbers, but you'll see this list of numbers corresponds with the number of actual curves we have. So this is given a value to each curve. So if I attach this values to the radius where the same curves are connected, you should see I get different values based on the distance from this point. So if I move this point around, it'll get thicker when it's close to the point, thinner when it gets away. And see how only these are affected? It's because this um, influence slider, if we make it a very small number, it'll have a lot more influence. Right. So now we've got thicker things, thinner things. And this can also be used with Dendro. Um, so if I hide this, instead of our radius being the 0.5, let's make the radius the values. Let's see what that looks like meshed with Dendro. And we wait, we make coffee. Send an email, check Instagram, start worrying. <laughs> um, and then there's also, I'll talk about you know, um, shell thickness attractor is basically the same thing, um, your lattice shell, and the values correspond with the points. So that would be the radius of your points if you're using a shell, but I won't go over that right now. So anyway, that's how it looks all joined together. Um, let's say maybe, let's make the attractor actually, um, let's make the attractor this actual skin so it gets thicker where it's closer to the skin. That'll probably make more sense. If this is a wheel, we want stiffness near the axle and softer around the outside where it'll be rolling. So maybe it's for a Mars rover and it's, it needs some cushioning on these wheels. <clears throat> um, so I think that was basically everything I had to go over um, for this demonstration. Hopefully you guys found it useful. Um, I think now I'll, s I'll save this after and I'll email this to you guys, but I think we should take some time and do some Q&A. Um, if anyone's still here listening. All right. Uh, would you like to do some questions and answers? Um, how about this? I'll turn on question and answer mode. I'm going to take two minutes. I'll be right back and then we'll start answering some questions.
All right. Um, I've got a lot of questions I need to look through. Great use of quarantine time. Thank you. Uh, I think there was a problem with YouTube. <laughs> um, thank you, Carla, for helping with this. Um, can all these curve tools be used on normal curves? Um, can you elaborate on that question? Can all these curve tools be used on normal curves? Oh, which are not created using lattice nodes. I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, but if you like, please send in me an email with what you're working on and I can definitely help with that. The screen went black. Oh no. <laughs> Can I send the presentation too? Definitely. I will send that by email to you guys. Uh, Millipede. So I can show Millipede, but not right now. I'll actually, I think I'll plan to do a more advanced topics one later. Um, so I'll stay in touch on the, um, on the Grasshopper forum, on the Grasshopper group page and the link in the presentation. Um, and just, uh, I'll be posting things there on, on webinars. So I'll, I'll, I'll do one covering simulation with Millipede and other things like that. Asha, um, sorry, let me, what am I doing here? Can you show a quick sample of structural optimization using crystal structures? So like I said, I'll, I'll do another webinar later, um, doing structural analysis using FEA. I'll use Millipede. I'll try to use Caramba as well. Um, I don't have the full version of Caramba, so it'll be limited, but we can do things with Millipede as well, and we can do some optimization. Um, Millipede uses um, beam optimization, like Besso's beam optimization, so it works pretty well. Um, uh, I'm not sure if how well validated it really is. I'm not an engineer, uh, but I can show how we can use those things with Crystal on. <clears throat> uh, more surface example, we get these. Um, oh, here's a nice one. What kind of work do you currently do? How did you manage to find a company that uses Grasshopper in the industrial field? Um, so I'm, I'm a freelancer, uh, freelance designer, and there's, there's quite a bit of stuff going on with, uh, typically I don't find clients that are using Grasshopper themselves. They have a particular need of, of what they want to do, and they, they know that people can do these kinds of things with Grasshopper. So um, I'm working with, with footwear companies, furniture companies. Um, we're doing athletic products, um, all sorts of things, and we're using lattice structures with those. Um, anything else I'm missing? All right. Well, um, let me let me go ahead and thank you all for attending. Um, let me just put this last page up for you guys. So thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to send this PDF to all of you. Um, so you have these links to where to download, find the forum, find the source. Always feel free to email me with questions, send me files. I'll help you figure things out. And if you want to buy me a beer, donate. Um, thank you, everybody. And please stay in touch, and I'll let you guys know about upcoming ones. All right.